Mrs. Magda and I were at a yard sale and I found these items laid out on a table pretty much like you see them. And I started rooting around in this box and I found an interesting pair of pliers. So I held them up, got the guy's attention and said, hey, uh, what do you want for the tools in this box? And he told me that I could have everything from here to here, all of it, for $10. So of course I brought it all home. Now before I show you these pliers, let me quickly go through everything else. This is a Trimo, Tremo pipe wrench. It's got an obvious problem. The front of the hook is completely gone. Got a pretty good sized monkey wrench. I've already got a few of these. The nice thing about this one is this handle design and it's already loose. See it unthreads? So all this can come off. So if I was going to pick one to clean up, this wouldn't be a terrible candidate. These are crescent. 12 inch snips. And they still snip. This is a Stanley Bailey number four. It says number four in there. It's obviously missing some parts. It's got the single patent number and no raised boss under the front knob. So that makes it, I think, 1920s. This screwdriver has obviously seen better days. I took away enough of the tape just to see if there was any markings on the furl. I didn't find any. Here's everything that was in the box. I'll start from left to right, and I'll end with the interesting pair of pliers. I don't think this one's marked. Okay, it has a little mark right there. I have no idea what that is. This one says drop forge. It's got pretty clear sizes. This is made in USA. 79. This one, number 31, drop forged. Made in USA, and on this side, we got Lakeside. The sizes are marked, but they're very faint. Two auto wrenches. Nothing special there. Looks like uh, this one's been uh, user modified. Both of these wrenches. Our Ford wrenches. I think that's got. It might be the M, yeah, M for more drop forge. Number 50. And this one has much clearer markings. Ford USA, a long part number. Some more wrenches here. I guess the one that was a highlight for me is this is another tappet wrench. I did a video on one of these. Brace bit. One of these. I don't know if the ends of these were modified or what. I think an owner put a W on it or maybe it's an M. Different.
These don't have a name on them. They seem to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, all the cutters look okay. And these were the pliers I was after all along. These pliers have some interesting markings right there. Some markings on the handle. A nice design on the handle. Some more interesting markings right there. I mean, even the jaws are kind of interesting. Let me, uh, let me clean these up a little bit. All right, here's the pliers cleaned up. Came out okay. Let's check out the markings again. So on the outside of the handle it says Combi Electra. I think it, yeah, it says it on both, both handles. And on the inside of the handle, it's got D-R-G-M. I think that's also on this handle too, yeah. DRGM. And the most interesting marking, I hope I can show you. If not, I'll try to take a close up photo. It says Steelcraft Tool. And then I believe it says Germany, British Zone. I worked a little Sharpie marker into the letters. See if that makes it easier to read. Does it help? That's pretty clear right there. Steelcraft tool, Germany, British zone. After World War II, the Allies divided Germany into four zones. Berlin was in the Soviet zone, but the city was also jointly occupied and divided into four sectors. The British zone included the highly industrialized Ruhr area. The three allied zones were merged in 1949, creating the Federal Republic of Germany, or West Germany. The DRGM inside the handle stands for Deutsches Reist Gebausmuster. The literal translation is German Empire Utility Model. This was Germany's version of a patent marking used from 1891 through World War II. Steelcraft was a low-cost tool manufacturer based in New York City. So these German patent marked pliers were made by a U.S. based company in the British-occupied Ruhr area of post-war Germany between 1945 and 1949. Pretty interesting, right? There also appears to be sort of an overstamping right here. That looks a little bit like an 8 right there. I don't know if I turn it, if it gets better for you. Yeah, who knows what that says. 
you know if that's there on pur purpose or if it's incidental all right let's see what these things can do looks like a typical wire cutter there there's a piece of steel coat hanger I right, cut that okay this is a piece of copper they cut it kind of mushed it that's cutting it okay all right it cut it all up and down the jaw let's try a piece of this um this this stranded stuff I mean, it cut it okay. Looks like they work. This section of the jaws in here is pretty standard. But this section up here, see that sort of diamond shaped, diamond shaped hull? It's got something similar on the very, on the very end there. I don't know if that's for crimping uh, terminals. I'm not sure. But what I did notice is if you take a square nut or a square fastener it looks like it really grabs hold of the points on a square fastener. Same thing with the uh, let's see if I can get in here for you. Same thing with the end. It really grabs hold. So I, I don't know, maybe those were for square nuts? Not sure. I'm also not sure about this down here. You see that hull? I don't know if these were cutters and someone tried to cut something that was too hard, or if that hull might be a wire stripper. Let's see. Let's see if I take, this is that same stranded wire. Let me take some of that. Okay, I got it in that hole. Give it a little, a little pull. Now, I don't know if it was meant for that, but it worked. So maybe that is a wire stripper. I wasn't able to find another example of these pliers online. If you've run across the Combi Electra name before, or if you've seen diamond shaped grooves in a set of jaws, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of the haul. Do you think it was worth 10 bucks? I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. This is another yard sale find. It's a remake of one of those antique cast iron banks. What you do is you put a coin in the dog's mouth like that. What the dog's going to do is going to jump through the hoop and put the coin in the barrel. You ready? Pretty neat, huh? I got this thing for a dollar. Main reason was because the clown had broken off. Seems like where the clown, you can kind of see the marks in the green, where the clown used to be. Every time the dog would come up, it hit the clown in the face. And I guess that eventually broke the clown off. So what I did was I moved him back a little bit and then I made this step for him because the other thing I noticed was every time the dog came up he was hitting the top of the hoop so now with my with my spacer there the dog misses the clown and also goes through about the center of the hoop you see how far off the whole thing was made 
and you know just to show you it's not some rare original bank it's clearly marked Taiwan still pretty cool for a buck though right